sure. So some of you were wondering how I set up my roll with my Aeros gimbal and my Futaba T8J. So uh, I'm going to show you guys how I did it and go into some step-by-step -step detail and hopefully it'll make better sense to you all. Um, I'll show you how it works. Uh, basically when I move the aileron right, the gimbal turns right. And when I move it left, it turns left. And actually while it's being held, the gimbal still remains stabilized. It still uses the stabilizing algorithm to keep the camera steady is just add a little bit of a tilt, which I think works really well when you're shooting certain uh, scenes where you want to be, make it look like it's soaring or keeps it from being so perfectly horizontal. So uh, let me show you how I did it. The first thing, of course, to do is to connect the roll wire coming out of the Aris into the top pin of channel 8 of the Futaba receiver, as seen in this photo. So then, went into the main settings of the Futaba, and I'll show you some of the parameters to change. Hit the plus, it brings up parameters. You go to parameter first, and you scroll down to home display, and change that to DT5, DT6. That's my preference, so that way when you go to the main screen, you can actually see DT5 and DT6 on the screen. And then the main thing, of course, would be go to go to aux channel, and go down to channel 8, and change that to DT6. This way you can actually control the roll using the DT6 switch right up here, the little guy. And that'll actually allow you to adjust it minutely to make corrections while actually on the field, which comes in handy. Then I go to reverse, scroll all the way to the right side, and change AV2 and flip it up using the thumb. And push the button here and execute it. So that way AV2 is set to reverse on the top. Let's make it look like this. So then I go to trim. And in, under trim, you can go down to DT6 and change that number. If you change to a really small number, then when you're using the DT6 switch to adjust the, the roll, it'll be really, really small. But if you change it to another, a larger number, such as 5, when you use DT6 to move it up and down, it'll go a little bit more so. I left it at 5, that works pretty well for me. Then, then I go into the P mixes. And this is the section that allows me to take the aileron and pump it into the, the roll. So check it out, I go down to curves. And I'm going to skip this section right here, I'm going to go down. And go down in here. Under mix, I hit the plus, turn it on, because I want to use it. The master, I'm going to set that to aileron. And then the slave, and the aileron is this right left here, and then the slave is AV2, which controls the roll. Uh, the switch, I, I go with switch F, it's all the way in the bottom here, um, this one right down here. And then I change this from null to down. So now it says off in the top where it says mix. So now when I hit the switch, I'll show you down below, when I hit the switch, it's on. But as you can see on the right side, this graph isn't doing anything. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the next menu right, window right here and I'm going to change these settings. Uh, on this one here, the P5, I change that. And these are pretty mild settings. You can go a little more extreme if you want. Change that to 75. And P4, I set to, oh, I think, 30. Let's see, yeah, 30. 30. Uh, P3, I set to 0. And on these, actually, I go down. I set this to negative 30. Too far, and I'll change this one to negative 75. Okay, so now you can see a curve, and this isn't too aggressive of a curve. And so now this signal is going to be going into the roll, so I'll show you what it's doing here. I go back out, and back out again, and you go to servo, and under servo, you can actually see the levels. And you can see that when I actually, before I hit the switch, all it's doing is connecting is changing channel 1. When I hit the switch, it actually controls channel 8 as well. And it just goes back away. And you can see it's not going quite as far because I didn't want my roll to, to occur that harshly. And I actually use the curve. If you use a, a, a smoother curve, um, it'll actually affect it a little less on the lower settings. So it's not as dramatic. As soon as you hit it, it doesn't jerk the roll. I want it to look nice and smooth. And also, as you can see, now that you can see the, the DT6 settings in the menu here, when you change DT6, it'll actually control 
the roll of the gimbal so that while you're flying, if you notice it's leaning a little to one side, you can use the DT switch to move it a little bit to each side. And it'll show you in the display right here as well. That's why I have the menu set like that. So let me show you the software. So I assume most of you have already launched the software before to adjust the tilt. Um, I'll show you what my roll settings are, which are very straightforward. Under roll, I have it set to the default, negative 30 for the minimum angle, and then positive 30 for the maximum angle. And then under ink mode, it's, it comes default set to white. You don't want that. You want to change it to a proportional mode. And so you, you click on that and you make it gray. Uh, that way, so that when you pull the aileron in the center, the gimbal will actually center the roll as well. And it'll follow whatever the stick movements are. Um, I found the speed the, under LPF SPD, the lower the number, the faster it is. So I actually bumped that up a little bit. I went from three, which was the default. I made it five. I think five is a pretty good number. That way it's not too fast and not too slow. See if I can get that there. It's really hard to adjust. So I went set to five and then I hit the right button and read it down. And that's it for the settings. So that's it. So hopefully it works for you guys. Thanks a lot.